SLT Mobitel Home Broadband Samaging Non-Stop Gamanagata Data Bowan. SLT Mobitel Home Broadband Samaging Non-Stop Gamanagata Data Bowan. Dasana Kanti Jume Sahit Liver Aish Danta Lepe Dapula Eti Prasna Dahaya Palakai. Tonight, well wishes, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says Sri Lankan President will be crucial in bringing stability to Sri Lanka in crisis, while Japanese PM Fumio Kishida hopes the country can make quick progress with the IMF. Deferment Sri Lanka's Foreign Ministry requests the Chinese Embassy in Colombo to consider deferring the date of arrival of the controversial Hamathota bound Yuan Wang 5. Restructuring Cabinet approves formation of new committee to provide recommendations to restructure Ceylon Electricity Board. Lessons Thailand's former central bank governor shares how they recovered from crisis. Credibility a must. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Nine. This Saturday, the 6th of August 2022. Vim milliliter CA smart pet kicker. Rupiala super had a the pole. From Ada Verona. This is Ada Verona First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Very good evening and welcome to Ada Verona 24's English News. I'm Andrew Bernard. In your top stories for tonight, President Ranil Vikramasinghe says discussions held on all party government with the political parties are so far successful. During his visit to the Ramanya sect headquarters in Colombo 5, he told the chief prelate that members of every party proficient on the subject should be appointed to the old party government. President Ranil Vikramasinghe called on chief prelate of the Ramanya sect Most Venerable Makulave Vimalathera at the headquarters of the Ramanya sect in Kalamba 5 last evening. <laughs> Now, members of the Samagi Janabala Vege have told President Ranil Vikramasinghe that they will support the all party government without accepting positions. This was conveyed during a meeting the President and the SGB had at the Presidential Secretariat last evening. During the meeting, President Ranil Vikramasinghe invited parliamentary members of the Samagi Janabala Vege to establish an all party administration. Parliamentarians of the main opposition party, the Samagi Janabala Vege, met with President Ranil Vikramasinghe yesterday to discuss the establishment of an all party government. Tumage, Pratipati Prakashene, Api Hontata, Agani. May Pratipati Prakashene, the Maya Pratipati Prakashen, make even a sack now. Put me Artica Prasanskana Karana, Obutumartani and Karanda Baha. Mahitana, Saji Prima Dasa, Matuma, Janadipati, Hatia Hitia, Etumata Karanda Pulankil. Make a Karana and Api Sildanama, make a take to end on. Apita Kisitan and Rakone. Mamanandakina, Saropaxica and Dogatina, Mahaloku, Varadak. Api Atava Sema, Saropaxica and Dokadan Nonikila, Masa Gana, this say, Saka Chakara. Mevela Vidi, Ape Pakshe, Inva, Onetarang Ape Kanda, Kissima Tanatura, Tanantra, Vara Prasadia, Gavima, Mukutnatu, Api Kiana Kala Pariche, the Gata, Uru the Gata, Me Rata Godaganima Sanda, Upari, Rata Vadakaran. Butumata, Kato, Anglican Runaway, Lantini, Bangolo, Tanduak, Kocher, Bangolo, the Wood, Rata, the CVC Pahata, Vima de Katamudalvat, Laba de Nata, Apasuta. Hadisiniti, Api Viswasa Karana, Evat Karanata Kati to Granatona, Waham, Visheshenma, Apime Avastava, Balane Bumadanatmaka, Subavadi, Minitu Parliament in Balapurtin, make a visitan, 
අපි ආණ්ඩු ಪಕ್ಷ විපක්ෂය කියලා බෙදිලා කෑ ගැහුවොත් මේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුව ඊළඟ සැරේ නැති වෙනවා ඊළඟ සැරේ ඇවිල්ලා පාර්ලිමේන්තුව ගිනි තියන්නත් පුළුවා IMF එක කියන වැඩසටහන ලේසි එකක් නෙමෙයි තිත්ත බේත් තියෙනවා ඉන්ජෙක්ෂන් තියෙනවා ශෛල කර්මයකුත් කරන්න සිදු වෙයි වාගේලාට ඒ වුණාත් අන්තිමට ඒකෙන් සුව වෙනවා මම හිතන්නේ දැන් අපි ඔක්කොම එක තැනකට ඇවිල්ලා තියෙනවා අපි ඔක්කොම එකට එකතු වෙලා වැඩ කරන්න මම කිව්වත් සර්ව පාක්ෂික ආණ්ඩුව කියන වචනෙ මම අයින් කරන්න සර්ව පාක්ෂික පාලනයක් කියමු පාර්ලිමේන්තුව තුලින්ම කැබිනට් මණ්ඩලයේ තුලින්ම සර්ව පාක්ෂික පාලනයක් අපි ඇති කරමු මේක ඉදිරියට යන්න ජනතා විමුක්ති පෙරන ඉන්නේ නැහැ විමාලී රන් සමයතුමා එනවා ද්‍රවිඩ ಪಕ್ಷ දෙකෙන් මම හිතන්නේ ද්‍රවිඩ කොංග්‍රසය කියලා තියෙනවා එන්නේ නැහැ කියලා මේ ස්ථාවර බය ඇතුනා මටත් මේක ගෙනියන්න උමනා නැහැ අඩු ගානෙම් ආරක්ෂාව සඳහා සමහර විට අපිට හදිසි නීතිය ගේන්න සිදු වෙයි ආර්ථික කටයුතු ගැන මට තරුණ අය මුණ ගැහුණා අරගලේ හිටපු අය ඒ අය වෙනුවෙන් උත් දැන් වෙනම අපි තැනක් කලාව ඔක්කොම එක්ක ඇති කරන්න කියලා තීරණය කරලා තියෙන්නේ ඒ තමයි මැනින් ෆ්ලෝ ටීම් මාකට් ඒක දෙන්න පුළුවන් කියලා මම කොහොන්න නැන් ඒකට රනිල් ගෝගම කියලා කියන්න කියලා ඉතින් අඩු ගානේ වගේ නමක් තියෙනවා කොහේ හරි ඉන් ද මීන් ටයිම් Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena visited the party headquarters of Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna in Nellum Mawatha in Batharamulla last evening. During his visit, the Prime Minister held a cordial dialogue with SLPP parliamentarians. Podujana Perumuna vidiyata me ratata hitakara sama karane ekedi ma adigawa janadhipathumata api sahayogaya laba denawa. Oh menuwata den gold face arakala karuwata. देशपालनिक इंटरनेशनल मॉनिटरी फंड Meanwhile the Secretary General of the United Nations Antonio Guterres also extended his wishes to President Vikramasinghe and reassured support of the United Nations towards the people of Sri Lanka Issuing a special congratulatory message to the President General Secretary of the United Nations Antonio Guterres said that the leadership of President Ranil Vikramasinghe will be crucial for building a favorable environment and stability to overcome the current challenges that the country is facing The UN Secretary General has acknowledged the president's commitment to forge consensus among all political parties in forming a national strategy to address these challenges. He also encouraged dialogue among all stakeholders including consultation with the public while ensuring respect for rule of law and basic human rights principles. Furthermore, support has been expressed in recognizing Sri Lanka's efforts towards women's political participation and encouraging the president's leadership to accelerate progress. Secretary General Guterres stated that the United Nations is ready to support the government and people of Sri Lanka in meeting their immediate and long-term needs and is looking forward to continuing cooperation of the United Nations in building peace, sustainable development and promoting human rights for all Sri Lankans. In the meantime, Prime Minister of Japan Fumio Kishida also congratulated President Ranil Wickremesinghe on his appointment as the head of state. Kishida said that he is hopeful of political stability in Sri Lanka and quick progress in negotiations with the International Monetary Fund. In his letter the Japanese premier stated that he is encouraged that Ranil Wickremesinghe who has devoted efforts to realize economic developments of Sri Lanka over the years has been sworn in as the president this time. Kishida said he is looking forward to seeing that political stability will be ensured and the negotiations with the IMF and the debt restructuring process with fair burden sharing among all creditors will swiftly make progress under the leadership of President Ranil Wickremesinghe. Now on the sidelines of the 29th ASEAN Regional Forum ministerial meeting taking place in Cambodia Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri met with other ministers of foreign affairs in other countries. During Minister Sabri's meeting with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi, he was reassured of China's support to the country to help recover from its debts. Taking to Twitter, the Chinese Foreign Minister pledged to support Sri Lanka to overcome the debt situation through dialogue 
and health move towards economic recovery and stability. In the meantime, Minister Sabri also met with Japanese Foreign Minister Hayashi Yoshimaya. During this encounter, Minister Hayashi expressed his congratulations to Minister Sabri on his appointment as Foreign Minister and the two ministers confirmed to further strengthen bilateral relations with a view of realising a free and open Indo-Pacific on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Japan and Sri Lanka this year. Now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today requested Chinese officials to delay the arrival of the Chinese research vessel Yuan Wang-5 to Sri Lanka. In a letter addressed to the Embassy of the People's Republic of China in Colombo, the Sri Lankan Foreign Ministry requested the arrival date of the vessel Yuan Wang-5 to the Hambantata port be deferred until further consultations are made on the matter. The Yuan Wang-5 vessel was scheduled to arrive in the country on the, fifth, the 11th rather, of this month and stay for one week. The purpose of the vessel's request to dock at the southern port of the country, as stated by the Foreign Ministry Affairs, has been for replenishment purposes. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs requested the Chinese Embassy to give the request their highest consideration. The vessel's arrival to Sri Lanka had drawn India's concerns and protests due to the ship's ability to carry out surveillance on space, space, Chinese satellites and intercontinental ballistic missiles. And we'll be back with more news. Stay with us. Big Three. Welcome back. Now, Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekra announced today that an eight-member committee was appointed to provide recommendations on how the Ceylon Electricity Board should be restructured. The Cabinet-approved committee is due to present the proposals within one month. The number of vehicles that have been dispensed with fuel over the past five days through the QR code system has exceeded 2.6 million. The system has also led to a marked reduction in fuel queues that once persisted for days on end. With close to 5 million vehicles registered for the national fuel pass system so far, the general public will not be able to register for the national fuel pass for the next 48 hours. Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekhar said yesterday that this would be due to planned maintenance carried out by the Department of Motor Traffic. Meanwhile, a system to distribute fuel to container trucks at four designated refilling stations in Colombo has commenced. Upon the request made by container owners and drivers to issue more fuel to such vehicles due to the fuel quota not being sufficient, a program to dispense fuel to container trucks on Friday and Saturday has begun. In the meantime, Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekhar said that a committee was appointed yesterday to evaluate companies suitable to import, distribute and sell petroleum products. The minister further stated that multiple companies will get to engage in the petroleum industry in Sri Lanka with the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation and the Lanka IOC. The minister also announced that an eight-member committee was appointed yesterday to propose recommendations on how the Ceylon Electricity Board should be restructured. The recommendations are expected to be submitted in one month. Now, in the meantime, a 22-year-old employee of a salon was shot dead today in the area of Udugampola in Gampa by two unknown assailants on a motorbike. The police say they suspect the victim was not the target of the attack, but instead the owner of the salon, who was related in to an individual believed to be involved in the murder of underworld figure Saman Pereira. At around 9 a.m. today, an employee at a salon in the area of Udugampala in Gampaha was shot dead by two unknown gunmen on a motorbike. Our area correspondent stated that the individual had succumbed to his injuries upon admission to hospital. The victim was identified as 22-year-old Achira Netruan. Police suspect that even though the owner of the salon was the target of the assailants, the 22-year-old had been shot. It is reported that the owner of the salon is a close relative of man by the alias Padme, a suspect in the death of underworld figure Saman Rohit Pereira, who goes by the alias Paspoda, who was murdered adjacent the Gampaha court. 
Police suspect that the member of an underworld gang known as Gane Mula Sanjeeva, who is related to the underworld figure Saman Perera, is related to today's murder. Police also state that the victim of the incident has no criminal record. In the meantime, the police media division said the body of an unidentified man had washed ashore near the Dikkovita Fishery Harbour in Bathala. The deceased, whose limbs were tied up, is believed to be aged between 35 to 40 years. Welcome back. The former Central Bank Governor of the Thailand, Dr. Viratai Santhiprabhob, says credibility of a program in stabilizing the economy is highly essential during a crisis situation to overcome it. While sharing his views during a conference in Colombo yesterday on how Thailand overcame the crisis that hit the country in 1997, he said a country with a reform program that has no credibility, there is always a high likelihood of that program to not succeeding. The Thai financial crisis of 97 could be categorized as a combination of a currency crisis and a banking crisis. A currency crisis because we had a very large short-term debt. In 1996, preceding to the 1997 crisis, our short-term yeah, debt that were coming to deal long. within the year exceeded the amount of international reserves that we had. We also had a weak political system. We had coalition governments, and the coalition governments consisted of um, supports from small parties. And you know, with, when you have coalition government with many small parties, it was always difficult to make big decisions, particularly re reform decisions. And the other major factor that I should highlight is the lack of good governance in the private sector. Large corporations and the banks, you know, there were a lot of connected transactions between the mother company and subsidiaries, not transparent uh, disclosures of their financial positions. What was the steps that you all took? You can let us know what when the crisis broke, what happened to Thailand? The Thai baht was floated in July of 1997 before it was floated. And obviously that led to massive bankruptcy because large corporations or even medium-sized firms, they had external loans you know, through the Bangkok International Banking Facility lendings. And when the exchange rate devalued from 25 baht to 57 baht, it led to massive bankruptcy for firms, a large proportions of firms that depended on external financing. The GDP contracted by about 1.5% in 1997 and further by an additional about 10 or 11% in 1998. So in total, two years, after the crisis, real GDP contracted by close to 12%. And it took us about five years before real GDP went back to the pre-crisis level. We had diversified economy, we had good manufacturing base, we were part of the regional supply chain. So when the exchange rate devalued from 25 to 56 and then stabilized in at about 40, 45, the exporting sectors benefited substantially. Tourism sector also benefited substantially. So because of the exports and tourism, that led to relatively quick turn around some segments of the economy. Can you give us what were the key lessons for the design and execution of the Thai stabilization plan? If I, if I step back a bit for a crisis of that magnitude, there was no single panacea. So it had to be combinations of measures and can think of categories of measures that, that we introduced. The first one related to stabilization. Stabilization package was very important. When the exchange rate was free falling, we had to stabilize that. When people had no confidence in the banking system, the depositors were taking deposits out of the bank. Money market in the bank market became non-functioning. So we had to stabilize the, so the money what market. was the interest rates like? It went up to about 25%. So when the money market went up to about 25%, no business would be able to survive. So we had to basically improve confidence, stabilize the functioning of the bank market, the money market, while also providing confidence in the foreign exchange market. The other category is related to fiscal stimulus. Fortunately, we didn't have large fiscal deficits leading to the crisis. The IMF in the first package, and they also admitted publicly as, as the mistake because they wanted Thailand to, to restrict fiscal spending. So they set the primary budget surplus target in the first letter of intent. 
but we managed to negotiate with them and substantially relax the, the fiscal condition so that the government would be able to use fiscal policy to stimulate the economy. The third one is related to economic restructuring, particularly restructuring of the banking sector. That's, that's very important because it's the root cause of the Thai banking crisis. We also liberalized foreign investments regulatory framework, although we had open FDI framework leading to the crisis, but the service sector was very much protected. So we had to amend the foreign business law to allow foreign participation in service sector and also privatization state-owned enterprises. About key lessons learned from the Thai crisis, given you know a lot of measures that need to be put in place in a comprehensive package, credibility of the stabilization program and reform program was utmost important. And the program has to be credible in the eyes of the local people as well as the international financial community. And we have to make sure that there's strong credibility in the design of the program and also in the execution of the program. So that's, that's very important. If you have stabilization program or reform programs that are not sufficiently credible, there's a high likelihood that the program will not succeed and you will end up having to have stronger program afterwards, creating more pain in the transition, in the transition process. And that's all the news we have for you this evening. Join us again tomorrow at the same time. Good night.